welcome Hope Savara here, creator of Core Functional Fitness, and I'm here to talk to you today about inversions. And so we're going to talk about headstand, but we're actually not going to practice headstand today. We're going to hopefully be able to practice a forearm balance, and so hopefully a little bit more effective in the shoulder girdle, and if you've never been able to do headstand before, don't worry. Um, you may never want to do it again after this. So in discussion of headstand, I find that many students are struggling with headstand for a number of reasons. Whether it be they feel like they have a weak upper body, a stiff back, tight shoulders, maybe a weak core, and they find that getting from the floor upright just seems next to impossible. And the reality is, maybe it is. For their body, maybe that's not the best option. And when I think about the body and I think about poses that we're practicing, I always ask myself, how beneficial is what we're doing really for us? Meaning, is it helping me or hurting me? And I'm not saying that headstand is bad. I practice headstand, um, maybe not as often as I used to, but it's not a bad posture, but it may not be right and effective for everybody. I first just wanna start out by posing the idea that maybe your body is not made for headstand. And what I mean by that is, if you bend your elbows and bring your forearms around your head, what if your head picks out between your forearms? and then you're told to move into headstand. That logic of your arms being shorter than your head are not gonna work out for you when you invert. You're gonna end up crunching on the neck, most likely displacing the head forward or back, which puts your neck in line for injury and doesn't allow for proper weight distribution. For many people as well, they're coming up into headstand being very unsteady and unstable, and so they're relying on their neck muscles, which are very weak, because of the type of jobs and things that we do during the day, and we haven't strengthened them properly, we're putting ourselves also at risk for injury. If you've ever woken up the next day with a really sore neck for the wrong reasons, most likely had to stand was to blame if you were practicing it the day before. What if we could practice inversions and get the benefit of reversing blood flow, reversing energy, opening and strengthening the shoulders, which headstand should be doing for us, but for many it may be causing injury, um, and be able to actually open up the tight shoulder girdle and tight chest and really get more out of the pose without losing the benefits of an inversion. And that's what forearm balance really can do for us. So you'll need a block and you'll also need a strap. And so take your strap and you're going to measure off inner shoulder to inner shoulder and then place your forearms within this strap. And if you're an avid yogi or you're a beginner and you've been exposed to headstand but, but are a little uncertain, I don't in any way want to discourage you from headstand, but rather be cautious as to why you're practicing headstand and if you're truly ready for it and if your body is accepting of it. All right, so you have your strap set up. And then make sure that when you're on the floor, you're like a hand to two hands lengths away from the wall so you have ample space. We're going to start out with puppy dog. So palms are face in on the block. The reason why I like to use a block in forearm balance is because it allows us to keep the chest open. So this part of the chest open and allows us to keep ourselves from not going chest dominant. So if you have ever done forearm balance where your hands are crossing in or you're making a fist with the opposite hand, most likely you're rounding the shoulders and I want you to open up the chest. So this is where that block comes in really, really handy. And it'll also help you to stop defaulting into your overly strong muscles and help you to start strengthening and lengthening the areas of the body that need it. All right, so let's just try it for ourselves now. So strap is just about the elbows, palms face in on the block. Curl the toes under, let's start with puppy dog and lift yourself up off the floor. So if you have really tight shoulders, the strap is gonna definitely be necessary. Focus on pushing up and back, and you're gonna feel a big stretch through your upper back and shoulders, and try not to jet the rib cage forward. I'm gonna keep the knees bent and just keep pressing down through my forearm. Stay here for as long as you need to and keep practicing this posture. If you've ever done headstand before, and you're told to come down onto your forearms, and then lift up off the knees, you'll find that staying here in headstand is not always easy for everybody. So unless you have really long hamstrings, 
or really strong torso, it's going to be really hard to stay in half headstand. So you might find that this variation of forearm balance is going to be more effective. And again, when I say effective, I mean effective for your all over health and wellness. All right, so setting your strap up again. And if you find that you have the shoulder strength to get up, great. Just make sure your elbows aren't pushing out wider than your shoulder girdle. And we can keep that space going in the shoulder girdle. All right, so again, lifting up and pushing down through the forearms. Now slightly look towards the floor, slightly bend the knees. If you have an assistant, you can help have them help you up. If not, I like to use the wall, bringing your feet up against the wall. Try not to sit in your shoulders. So here I'm sinking down. I'm going to push down and in on my block and use the strap to create that openness in the shoulders. Now slightly looking towards the floor, I can slowly bring my feet off the wall by pushing down and in on my forearms and block. So it can assist me in my balance without painting my neck and shoulders whatsoever. So when I'm in that forearm balance, you can come down, I'm gaining the strength and stability in my upper body. I'm helping reverse some of that kyphosis, okay? It's going to assist me in poses like down dog, up bow or wheel, even bridge. And I'm going to be able to release the upper shoulder girdle rib cage, and even neck, where maybe headstand can always possibly limit those areas. And again, I'm not saying that headstand is bad, be it forearm headstand or three-point pose. Some people's bodies can naturally embrace those postures, and if you're one of them, awesome. But what I do want to encourage you today to do is try this posture. Try it with these tools and see if your body can benefit it from any way, shape, or form. I find that when I do practice forearm balance or puppy dog, I get way more openness in my shoulder girdle. Any kinks in my neck or shoulders or pinching in my shoulder blades is often alleviated. So I'm finding I'm building the strength in my upper body, pain free on the neck. I get the inversion and I also build the strength in my upper body, which I'm definitely looking for. So next time you hit the mat, think about this simple posture whether it be just simply puppy dog or inverting into forearm balance. Opt out of headstand and see what happens. For more information, visit my website at hopecorpfitness.com and I can't wait to practice with you again really soon. From my heart to yours, from my soul to yours, namaste.